Good morning, everyone. My name is Mark Vermont, and I am the head elder here at Our Savior Lutheran Church. We'd like to welcome you again to another uh, Sunday worship service. We're happy again to have Sam Kim here uh, bringing the gospel and the message to us this morning. So all of you that are here in the sanctuary, if you'd like to give people uh, a wave for uh, passing of the peace, or again, push out a a text message to someone who isn't here and will probably be worshiping uh, to us later. We'll, uh, we'll go ahead and get started with our, our prelude, and then we'll move through uh, the call to worship after that. Please rise for the call to worship. Bright stars, high mountains, the depths of the seas, sources of rushing rivers. May all these break into song as we sing to Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen, amen, amen. Power, praise, honor, eternal glory to God, the only giver of grace. Amen, amen, amen. Sing praises. Oh, 
In response to God's faithful love for us, let us confess our sins and commit to God's path for us. We begin in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. May the Lord who has begun this good work in us bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Verses 1 through 7. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth. The heights of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, for he made it and in his, in his hands formed the dry land. O oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. The New Testament reading this morning is from Acts, first chapter, 
verses 6 to 11. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, it is not for you to know times or seasons that the Father has fixed by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. And when he had said these things, as they were looking on, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. And while they were gazing into heaven as he went, behold, two men stood by them in white robes and said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into heaven? This Jesus, who was taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 24th chapter. Thus it is written that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses to these things, and behold, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you, but stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. And he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he blessed them, he parted from them and was carried up into heaven. This is the gospel of the Lord. Please remain standing for the hymn.
Did I do this right? Can you? Okay, good. All right. Um, it's great to be here again. It was great seeing some of you last week. Uh, thank you for tolerating me last week, and uh, thank you for coming and tolerating me again today. Um, somebody must not want me to preach today because this morning everything that could keep me from coming here had happened, including my car had died, so I frantically borrowed my wife's car to be here, and what a joy it is. I, during our confessional, actually confessed my sin of unbelief, that I was anxious and worried, uh, but I should trust in the Lord more, shouldn't I, in times of unexpected troubles, and so I'm just being transparent. I am as fallen, if not more, than any one of you. So thank you for allowing me to be here and to be on this pulpit to share the gospel with you. So we have witnessed or experienced or seen many things in the past few months that we might not have ever expected. Um, we've witnessed switching from in-person to live stream worship services or recorded worship services online. We witnessed Zooming to do everything. Zooming to talk, hang out, play, perform, pray, worship, and so on. We witnessed home-based schooling. Working from home instead of commuting to work. Dining in at home instead of at restaurants. We witnessed deaths and suffering by the virus and prejudice and injustice. We witnessed debates and protests and arguments and riots over racism or whether we should wear a mask or not, opening or closing businesses in person or remote schooling for this coming, very quickly coming school year. I wonder what we would testify to if we are called to the witness stand about these times that we have witnessed. Well, what does it mean to be called to witness? Well, I'm an ex-lawyer, as some of you may know, and so that word is very simple for me. You've seen it many times before. It is to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help me God about certain persons or events or incidents. So what does it mean to be called Jesus' witnesses, even in these uncertain and challenging times? Last week, through the book of Acts, we learned that Jesus' acts continue through us. But Jesus' acts continue through us by the power of His Spirit. So we today learn that we are His witnesses, His witnesses by His Spirit. We are His witnesses by His Spirit. I like to talk about His witnesses in three ways. Number one, we witness Jesus all the time. We witness Jesus all the time. Number two. We witness to everyone everywhere. We witness to everyone everywhere. And number three, we witness by the Holy Spirit. We witness by the Holy Spirit. Point number one, we witness Jesus all the time. See, we can bear witness or testify only to the things that we have witnessed. We could only witness or be a witness to the things that we actually have witnessed. What we've heard or seen or felt and know ourselves. Now, we were not physically walked the earth, taught and healed and fed and died on the cross and rose again. But we certainly can, through his words, his words in Scripture, all that he was and did, all of his acts. 
we can also continue to witness, see, or hear, or experience everything that Jesus continues to be and do in our own lives and others through our daily prayers and in His Word, in fellowship with our families of faith, and in our praising and worshiping together, but also in living and working in our communities. The act of witnessing for Jesus means to actively witness or experience Jesus, who He is and what He does. But if we're unwilling to be with Jesus and be around Jesus, then what and how can we truly testify about Him or be His witnesses? Verse 6 says that the disciples were still asking about whether Jesus would restore their nation of Israel. When will you make Israel great again? They were asking. See, we often want God to just do what we want, when we want, where we want, to who we want, and how we want. But see, that's not us being Jesus' witnesses. There's a different term for that when we want things our way right now. And that's not being a witness. You know what that is? That's us trying to be his customers, his clients, his bosses. Hey, Jesus, when are you going to heal us, make us rich, make us powerful and influential, make us beautiful and healthy, make us popular and respected? When are you going to make us great again? Witnessing is not about what, when, where, how, and who we want. Acts of witness is always about telling the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth about what, when, where, how, and who God is, does, and says. It's about witnessing about God. And God says that His plans are much, much bigger than our own little plans of restoring our own lives, our own families, our own culture, our own race, our own nation. Jesus says in verse 8 today that God's desire is to restore to God every person, every family, every race, every culture, every nation, everywhere. Which leads us to point number two. We witness to everyone, everywhere. Jesus says in verse 8 that we will be his witness in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. See, Jerusalem was the capital city of Israel. But more importantly, the holy temple was there where all the Jews came to worship God. Jerusalem, for us, is our churches and our church families. Judea is what the Jews call their own homeland, their own people, their community. Judea, for us, is our neighborhood, our communities, our families, and people that we identify with, hang out with, and consider our own. Samaria? Samaria, on the other hand, were the communities and people among and around the Jews that the Jews avoided and considered foreign and strange, maybe immoral, maybe even dangerous. In other words, Samaria for us are the communities and people who live or work among and around us who we don't really hang out with, that we feel we are kind of awkward or they're kind of awkward and uncomfortable around. Uh, We even may avoid or disdain or fear or look down upon, have prejudices or bias against. See, whether we like them or not, Jesus loves them just as much as us. Jesus died on the cross for them and us all. 
Though we were all foreign and strange and immoral and unholy enemies of God, He loved us and died for us when we were His Samaria. We were His Samarians that He loved so much. And then Jesus throws in the kitchen sink and says, we will be witnesses to the end of the earth. So put all four together, our churches, our families and communities, those who are strange and foreign or different to us, and to the end of the earth. And what do we have? We witness to everyone, everywhere. That is what God shows us through the book of Acts. That as His church witnesses throughout Jerusalem in chapter 1 through 7, and then throughout Judea and Samaria, chapters 8 through 12, and throughout the Roman Empire and the end of the then known world from chapter 13 through 28, we are His witnesses everywhere to everyone. We don't get to pick and choose who, what, when, where, and how. We just are. But we are His witnesses by the power of His Holy Spirit, which leads us to point number three. We witness by the Holy Spirit. We witness by the Holy Spirit. Now, how in the world are we supposed to engage in acts of witnessing for Jesus? You know, share the gospel to everyone, everywhere, all the time, 24-7. We're barely trying to figure out how we'll make a living. How we'll avoid the virus. How we'll keep our families from falling apart. Keep our churches going for at least another few weeks. And which side of the politics and protests we should even be on. We have so much stuff going on and so much things to decide and work on. We don't have time. We don't have strength. We don't have the talent or the knowledge to witness for Christ. But let's be really honest. The big reason it's hard for us to witness Jesus may be that we do not care for or have the courage to be shunned, laughed at, avoided, excluded, judged, mocked, looked down upon, persecuted, suffer, and in some cases even be killed for our acts of witness. We don't have the care or the courage to witness to that extent. See, the word witness in Greek is martus, the same word from which we get the word martyr. Martus, martyr, as in those who suffer and die for witnessing Jesus. See, we can respect and be inspired by the martyrs, right? We have our favorite martyrs, I know, but we are not our own favorite martyrs. We are not so eager to be one of those martyrs, are we? No. That's just way too much pressure and stress. To will myself and make myself witness Jesus in my own life? Come on, Jesus, I can't do that. You know I can't. And that is why Jesus says in verse 8, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses. It is by the power of the Holy Spirit that we are His witnesses, His martyrs. Now please note that Jesus does not say, you must be my witnesses, or go be my witnesses, or won't you please, 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 with cherry on top, be my witness? Would you, could you? Be my witness? Jesus says, you will be my witnesses. That's a statement of fact. Not us, but the Holy Spirit will empower us 
to teach us and remind us of all that we've learned and witnessed, and He will give us the courage. Encourage us to be Jesus' witnesses in our churches, in our communities, with our neighbors and strangers, and throughout the world. It is by the power of the Holy Spirit that we will be His witnesses in every aspect of our lives, even and especially in our times of suffering, challenges, sickness, brokenness, bankruptcies, joblessness, homelessness, divorces, family heartaches, addictions, pandemics, unrest, injustice, and even when we are without a pastor, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we will be His witnesses. Amen? As I was preparing the sermon, I was reminded of how my family witnessed Jesus through our Savior Lutheran Church family. So please don't be offended by what I'm about to say. Our family was your Samaria. Our family was your Samaria in that we had been living and raising our family in Topsfield for 10 years. And yet, we did not know any of you. We were not part of your family, your friends, your communities, your church. Could you go to the next slide? We did not know you, eat with you, play with you, worship with you. We did not cross path with you until one day one of your family members, the Rogers family, befriended us and invited us to your church around 2011. And that was around the same time that we also felt convicted as a family to leave our own church family in Cambridge and be his witnesses to our Samaria, the Topsfield community where we lived but did not really belong. During that time, OSLC, like now, was without a settled pastor. <laughs> when we showed up, there was no settled pastor, just like now. Can you go to the next slide, please? But from that first day we came to OSLC, all we witnessed, any, the, the only thing that we witnessed all the time among you was His love, His word, His spirit in your worship, in your fellowship, in your missions. You greeted us with open arms and showed amazing grace and patience, especially for our then children who are very much a handful. That's, a, that's an understatement. Some of you may remember. You were so gracious and spoke truth and life-giving word into my children. Thank you, Lynn and David Green and many, many others. We witnessed the Holy Spirit in you as you embraced us as your family, especially in our small groups. The Greens family, the Bats, and even the Demons. I don't know if uh, the Demons are here today. We were no longer your Samaria, you see. We were part of your Jerusalem and Judea to worship together, to teach together, outreach together, and to witness together in Jerusalem, in our church, and in Judea, Topsfield, and our local communities, and Samaria, Samaria, the mega sports camps, and care packages to our Topsfield fair workers, and crop walks, and food pantries, and so on, and so on, and to the end of the earth. Through missions, many missions, including to India, and Bolivia, and of course, our friends in Navajo. And by His Spirit, by the Holy Spirit of unity and joy, our OSLC family prayed, blessed, and sent our family out to North Andover in 2016 to be His witnesses there as well. By the same Spirit, you continue to encourage us after we left, even Make our church offering basket. Thank you, Don Jorgensen. Thank you, right? Visited us. Babysat for us. Thank you, Virginia. Took me fishing. Thank you, Blair. Prayed for us. Invited us for your gatherings. You continue to witness Jesus to us 
by the power of the Holy Spirit. And it is by the same Holy Spirit that I am here to testify or bear witness of the amazing acts of Jesus through OSLC. May the Holy Spirit remind you, remind you and encourage you so that you will be excited, enthused, elated to witness even more of what the Lord will do through you by His Spirit in this season. According to verse 9 through 10 today, as Jesus rose up into the heavens, the disciples were just standing there gazing into the sky, trying to see Him hmm, in the clouds. They were trying to, they are just standing there, just looking for Jesus in the clouds, wondering whether and when He might be coming back. As we are witnessing these uncertain and anxious times for our nation, for our communities, but also for our church, we too may be wondering where Jesus is and whether he's coming back. Jesus is coming back. Jesus is coming back, just as the two angels said in verse 10 to 11 today. This is not the time for us to just gaze into the walls or the ceilings or the sky, just kind of waiting. It is time to go into the world, to everyone, everywhere, and bear witness, to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth about Jesus, his gospel, so help us God, because we are his witnesses by his spirit. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Lord, you did not rise to heaven and left us on our own to do your work. No, you knew us much better than that. You sent your Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for being with us, for reminding us and empowering us and encouraging us, especially in our times of anxiety and uncertainty and suffering. Lord, it is in these times that we know and profess that you will be a shining light, that you will be our shining light through us, that you will work through us to be the salt of this world and the light. Oh, Holy Spirit, unlike the disciples, we know you are already with us, but we wait on you to guide us to teach us, to empower us, to be bold in our witness during these dark times. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please stand as we sing the hymn. Uh, but sing softly. I wish we could be as bold as Sam's powerful preaching. But mean it while you're singing.
Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> again, Sam, thank you so much for that message. That was really wonderful. I appreciate that. <clears throat> um, so again, next Sunday, we'll be having uh, our service at 9.30. It'll be indoor, indoors. And um, again, as you're signing up, if you could, um, as you sign up, if you see that there's slots full, again, if you're a, a, a two or a family of one, you can go ahead and sign up into the next uh, largest group. Um, but we ask that if you are a two or a one and you, there aren't any more slots to be filled, if you don't sign up in a four or five, reach out to uh, Levi or myself or Carrie Trunfio um, as we're still trying to uh, navigate the numbers. It's good to see it today, but we want to make sure that we have uh, enough slots for people um, moving forward. Uh, next week, we'll be having uh, David Batchelder here, Pastor Batchelder, uh, with us. We'll be also serving um, Holy Communion. We'll be serving that a little bit differently. Um, next week, we'll be having uh, cups that will be passed out, and we'll have both the host and the uh, wine in it. And so we'll be doing that um, as a group together. So it'll be a little bit different, but certainly a way to uh, try to keep everyone safe and have less hands on uh, the, the elements. And then again, we'll have Sam on August 30th, and then uh, starting September 6th, uh, Pastor Tim uh, will be here with us. The prayer meetings again are happening uh, every at 7 p.m. Uh, on Zoom, and if you'd like to be a part of that, you can reach out to Peggy Hotham, Kathy Kishbaugh, or Bob Wanchek, uh, and they can provide the Zoom link for you. Our missions update today is uh, again from the root cellar. We're going to be uh, continuing to collect school supplies. Um, that's due next week, so if that's something that you are interested in, um, please reach out to Kerry Trunfio and um, either provide a, a monetary donation or if you're going to be delivering things, you can drop them off here at the church. You can see the items uh, that we need, more backpacks and folders and everything really needed for the start of the school year. Even though we don't know what it's going to look like for everybody, the kids still need those uh, materials as they prepare for either online or class. Uh, hybrid, whatever it's going to look like as we move forward. Um, again, we want to just thank um, everyone that has been um, helping with the Parsonage. If you're here, just raise your hand if you've had five minutes or five hours or anything like that. We just want to thank you all. It really does look amazing over there. Um, I know I got an email or a text message from Pastor Knapp and he just wanted to thank everyone um, for making it look just amazing for them to move in, um, sprucing it up a little bit. You know, we, we, we could have left it and just cleaned it and left it, but we, uh, the steps that we took to really make them feel welcome as they come, I really appreciate that. So special thanks for Han to Hank Betts and Janice LeBlanc and also Dave Christensen. I know all the hours that you guys have put in organizing and everything. We really want to thank you for that. Um, so also we want to, um, there are some birthdays in this month, and for those of you that are having birthdays, we want to wish you a happy birthday. I won't mention names, <clears throat> but um, you know who you are birthday today or any other day. Um, anyway, um, if you'd please, <laughs> I had to say something like that. Um, if you'd please stand for prayers. <laughs> Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for the opportunity that we continue to have to come here and worship you. Thank you, Lord, for um, giving us that freedom. Lord, we just thank you for uh, the blessing of Sam, for him to be able to come and to witness to us, bear witness to your holy name. Lord, I thank you for his faithfulness to you. I continue to watch over him um, and his congregation in, uh, in Andover. Lord, I just thank you for uh, the Knapp family as they are here, Lord. Um, be with them during this week as they close and they go through uh, that closing process. May that be them, Lord, as they move in next week. Movers come, they, trans, uh, they transfer over to here, and then as they transition out of Acton, Lord, bless time for them and for the congregation in Acton. Lord, for our country for our leaders nationally, locally, as uh, so many issues, Lord, so many issues that you would just continue to put on their heart. 
be with our leadership here as we move through and prepare for the call committee. And Lord, as we prepare for what fall is going to look like for our Sunday school classes, for our adult discipleship, pray that you would be with the leadership as we plan that. Be with all of the students who are preparing for school in some form, Lord, as it can be an anxious time to begin with as you go back from the fall, Lord, that you would just calm hearts and minds. Be with the parents as they're uncertain as to what the year will look like and what plans will look like for child care and how they will manage, Lord. And be with the teachers as they also need to plan and prepare for things that are uncertain, Lord. May we just lean on you, lean hard on you for those. I pray, Lord, for um, all of us to bear witness to who you are, bear witness in our families, bear witness to our neighbors, to our neighborhoods, to our Samaria, to our Jerusalem, Lord, that you would just put it on our hearts that we might witness to others. And all these things, Lord, we pray as you have taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You called out into darkness. You reached down to save us. You conquered the grave. You crossed the divide. Lost in our sin, you made us alive. How can we? Stop singing Oh, we're never gonna 
there's one other thing a little birdie just told me is, is that it was Don and Ursula's anniversary yesterday. Is that right? Yeah. How many, Mr. Bade? How many years? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> counting, counting. <laughs> 67. 67 years. That's really just a beautiful thing. It's such a pleasure to be able to see you guys and have you guys, and we just want to wish you all the happiness. Um, go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.